dear students today we will be discussing a case studies involving energy economics and we will be introducing the concept of LCA which is nothing but life cycle analysis. So, let us consider the analysis it goes something like this what do you mean by techno economic analysis? The techno economic analysis is a method for evaluating the economic performance of a technology. So, what we are going to study here a case study. So, let us conduct a techno economic analysis of electricity generation from biomass pellets in a certain district x because in Indian context biomass is used for making pellets. Nowadays demand of producing pellets are increasing. So, people are looking for different alternatives to make pellets for energy production that is the basis of creating this example. So, it has got 5 steps we have categorized first is crop cultivation data, then crop residual data or residue data, then pelletizing plant. So, we need a pelletizing plant to produce pellets, then power generation unit we need to invest some money to install a power generation unit so as to enable us to use pellets for power generation and then finally, we need to investigate the economics of the plant. So, these are the 5 steps we have categorized and we will consider one after another and finally, we will see the feasibility of the project. First step in this analysis covers the estimation of availability of agricultural residue in the district X for biomass pellets. So, we have done some survey and then it is found that if we consider a district for 3 locations say for example, A, B, C we have variety of crops production. For example, location A produces rice, wheat, corn, location B produces rice, wheat, corn again and location C produces rice and wheat. And also we have data the area of cultivation. So, it is about 46.2 hectare for rice in case of location A. Then for wheat it is 20.5 hectare, corn 4.3 hectares for location A. For location B for rice, wheat and corns we have 55.2 hectares. 28.0 hectares and 3.8 hectares. And for location C for rice and wheat we have area of cultivation is 16.4 hectares and 9.7 hectares respectively. And yield is also given here for all those crops and we are defining one term called residue to products. So, in case of location A and rice crop it is about 1.5 and then for wheat it is 1.75 then that way we have the data for all the 3 locations of a particular district. And also we have calculated the residual losses. So, we can see 12 percent, 15 percent and again 15 percent for corn and for all the cases for all the locations losses are varying because it includes transportation as well. So, if the plant is very nearby then transportation losses will be low and if it is far from the generation then transportation losses will be high. And then we have residue as fodder. So, some portion of the crops is used as fodder 
for cattles. So, it is considered like 20 percent, 15 percent, 4 for rice, wheat and corn for location A. Similarly, 24, 18, 2 for location B in case of rice, wheat and corn and for location C, it is 15 percent and 13 percent for rice and wheat respectively. And also there are some other losses which are also accounted for rice, wheat and corn, so it is like 2 percent, 2 percent and for corn it is considered that there is no losses. And that way we have considered for other three crops of location B and two crops for location C. So, with this data now what we are going to do? First we need to find out the effective crop residue availability. If there are n number of plants then we have to find out the total residue availability. So, that is why it is written that for IH crop which is represented by CRA effective I per unit crop production which can be expressed by using this expression CRA effective for particular crop is equal to RCI multiplied by 1 minus RC CR CRA effective I is equal to RCI that means for particular crop multiplied by 1 minus CR CSTI multiplied by 1 minus CR folder I multiplied by 1 minus CR other I. So, what is CR CST is something like fraction of the total crop residue lost in collection, transportation and storage and RCI we know which represents the residue to product ratio for I8 crop. Okay? It may be n number of crops. So, we are considering for a particular crop at the moment and CR folder is the fraction of the crop residue used for folder and CR other is the fraction of the crop residue employed in the other competing uses. Now, once we know for a particular crops then we can go for multiple crops. right? So, if this is the case then we are representing one term called NRA effective which is nothing but effective net annual crop residues availability for biomass pellet and this can be expressed mathematically by using this expression that is NRA that means net annual crop residues is equal to summation of I is equal to J is equal to 1 to MN. Okay. So, this is AIJ this is the area and this is YIJ is the yield and rest of the terms are same what we have expressed before. So, that means AIJ and YIJ represents area and the yield of IH crop and there may be multiple crops in a particular location okay? that is how it is represented by IJ. So, if this is the case and if we have the data then we can find out what is NRA effective. Okay? So, this is the expression what we have defined this expression and we can use the data and we can find out. So, this can be very easily we can see here like by using this spreadsheet already I have created this for you. So, these are the data we have and we can find out what is NRA. So, if I click here you can see the equation used to solve this equation. Okay? So, that way we can find out for all the crops and we can sum what is actually know called the NRA. So, even though this mathematics looks somewhat complicated, but it is not so complicated. If we take the individual measures and sum it, then what we will get is nothing but NRA effective. Right? Now, let us move to the next discussion like estimation of unit cost of production of biomass pellet. So, once we are done with that estimation, then we will find out the unit cost of production of biomass pellets. Okay? 
So let us see how this can be calculated. So that's how we can say this is a step two. Okay. So annual production of biomass pellets, which is represented by AP, BP, BP stands for biomass pellet, and AP is the annual production, which can be expressed as AP BP is equal to eight seven six zero. So how it has come? This three sixty five into the hours. Okay. So that hours will be something like this. So what you will get is eight seven six zero, and this is capacity utilization factor, CUF BP for biomass pellet, and PBP is the rated production capacity of the biomass pellet unit. Okay. So once we have this information, then also we need to know because finally we need to find out the unit cost of biomass pellet production, which is represented by UC BP, and this can be obtained as the ratio of the total annualized cost. Of the biomass pellet unit to the annual production of biomass pellets. Mathematically, it can be expressed as UCBP is equal to this term will come. Okay, it's a very long term. Even though it looks very complicated, but if we take the real analysis, it's not so complicated. So it is something like CBP is the capital. Investment of biomass pellet, and this term mathematically represented by another mathematical expression, and we can find out. And this zeta is the annual repair and maintenance cost as a fraction of capital cost. Okay, and CBP is already known to us, which is the capital investment, and this part is known. And C1 is cost of the manpower required. N one is the number of workers hired. Then PBP is the rated production capacity of the biomass pellet unit, and RBF is the correction factor for estimating the requirement of biomass feedstock based on the production capacity of the pellet unit. And this is to account for the moisture loss during the drying and pellet production process. And this X C term is the specific amount of electricity consumption in the biomass pellet unit, and P E is the unit cost of electricity. And this term already defined, which is nothing but annual production of biomass pellet, right? So once we have all those data, then we can find out what will be the unit cost of biomass pellet production, which is represented by U C B P. And this term, as I said, is nothing but capacity recovery factor, and this can be expressed by this mathematical expression: R D T B D is equal to D multiplied by one plus D to the power of T B D divided by one plus D to the power of T B D minus one, and D here is the discount rate. And TBP is the useful lifetime of the biomass pellet unit, right? Here, similar to the expression what we have described in equation four, levelized cost of electricity is estimated as the ratio of total annualized cost of the biomass power plant to the annual. Amount of electricity produced by a biomass power plant using biomass pellet as the feedstock, and when you talk about annualized cost, which includes annualized capital cost, annualized operating cost, under the annual operating cost, cost of fuel is also included. Then annual repair and maintenance cost is also comes under. Annualized cost parameters. Now, let us take the data regarding the biomass pelleting unit. Let us consider the cost of the pellet 
machine is about 16 lakhs and lifespan of the unit is 15 years and discount rate is 10 percent and annual maintenance contract that is maintenance cost is about 10 percent of the total cost and per person manpower cost is 100 rupees per hour and number of manpower is 4 and rated production capacity we have considered 300 kg per hour and biomass feed to pellet is 1 is to 1 and cost of biomass is CBF which is represented by CBF is about 0.55 kg per rupees per kg and specific electricity consumption is 0.1 kilowatt hour per kg and unit cost of electricity is 7 rupees per kilowatt hour and hours of operation per day is 12 hours that is how this capacity utilization factor is 0 0.5. So, if you use the earlier equation 5 which gives the capacity recovery factor which was represented by R D T B P okay this biomass pellet. So, this is the expression 0.1 multiplied by 1 plus 0.1 to the power of 15 divided by 1 plus 0.1 to the power of 15 minus 1. So, it will give you a value of 0 0.131. Since the plant is 12 hours run per day on full load, so capacity utilization factor is 0 0.5. And by using the equation 3 for annual production of biomass pellet calculation, so it is comes out to be 131400 kg per annum. Now, if we use the equation 4 for calculation of unit cost of biomass pellets, then this value is found to be about 2 point rupees 2.91 per kg of biomass pellets. So, just to recall the expression which is used for calculation of this UCBP. So, these terms were used and these all values are given to us now. So, we can do the calculation. Now, our next step is unit cost of electricity generation from biomass pellets. So, we need to consider the data like what will be the cost of the biomass power generating unit. So, it is about 30 lakhs lifespan we have considered 15 years, discounted rate is 8 percent and annual maintenance charges is about 12 percent and per person manpower cost is 100 rupees per hour and number of manpower required is 5, rated production capacity 200 kg per hour and kg of pellet per kilowatt hour is about 1.5 cost of pellets are considered to be 2.91 which is calculated in the last slide. So, it is found to be 2.91 per kg and a specific electric electrical consumption or electricity consumption is about 0 0.02 kilowatt hour per kilowatt hour and you need electricity cost is 7 rupees per kilowatt hour and number of hours running is about 12 hours. So, similar to the previous calculations, the capacity recovery factor can be calculated by using this expression and it is found to be 0 0.116. And then we can also calculate the annual production of power from biomass pellets. Okay. So, here we are representing annual power production from biomass pellet with the help of A P des earlier only we use A P and this is biomass pellet. So, this is the hour then capacity utilization factor and then written production capacity. So, it is found to be about 876000 kilowatt hour per annum. Then our intention is to find out unit cost of electricity from biomass pellet unit. 
So, we can use the earlier expression what we have defined. So, again I can recall so expression goes something like this here. So, this part we have calculated this is about 0 0.116 and this part is 30 lakhs we will have okay. and uh, these values are known to us now this is 12 percent and then CBP is known 30 lakhs and the other values C1 is 100 rupees per hour and number of manpower is 5. So, this is 100 multiplied by 5 and then we will have this plus P B P is given. So, we can multiply this and then we, we can find out what could be the U C B P because all values are given to us. So, this is considered as like billet it is 100 kg per hour is the capacity we have considered P B P. So, that is how we can do the calculation and it is found to be 5.67 rupees per kilowatt hour which is quite justified because if we see unit electricity price is rupees 7 per kilowatt hour, but what we are getting is 5.56 rupees per kilowatt hour. So, it is a good solution for us. And then once we are done with this UCBP that means unit cost of electricity from biomass pellets then next what we can do we can calculate the annual benefits of the power plant would be by selling the electricity generated at market price. So, it will be something like our benefit. So, since we know the annual production of power from the biomass pellet is H76000 multiplied by 7 is the unit electricity. So, this is somewhat like 61 lakhs 32,000 INR. Okay? So, this is somewhat like our benefits. Okay? So, this value is required because next step we are going to do NPV. Okay? So, this will give you the profit. So, how we are doing this evaluation like net present value of biomass pellet based power project. So, mathematically it can be expressed as NPV is equal to summation of I to T then BI minus CI divided by 1 plus D to the power of I where T is the lifetime of the biomass pellet based projects and BI is the benefits and CI is the cost in the IATR. And we have assumed one data like service value at the end of its useful life is neglected because it is a very, very small amount. That is the assumption we have made here. Now, let us do the calculation for annual cost. So, this is the expression. So, here we have not considered this part. Okay? and only this part we have considered for the annual cost and that is how we said we have excluded the capital cost part. right? So, once we consider all the data and substitute in the expression then this C i which is nothing but the annual cost is found to be about 45 lakhs 23,910. So, once we know bi and then ci then what we can do we can do the npv calculations because it is expected that life of the plant will end at the end of 15 years okay so these calculations i can show in spreadsheet so you can have a look 
how I have done it. So, already I have done the calculations. So, this is first column is year and then second column is cost, third column is benefit, then we have B minus C benefit minus cost, then we have NPV and then cumulative NPV. So, here investment is 30 lakhs that we need to consider here. For year 1 cost comes out to be 45 lakhs 23,910 and the benefit what is calculated to be 61 lakh 32,000 ok. So, B minus C if we consider that is the profit right. Then what we did we have done the calculation something like this because we need to consider the discounted value ok and this is cash flow and this is the term like at 8 percent what will happen it will be something like 1 plus 8 by 100. So, it will be 1.08 to the power of year ok for first year it will be 1 P4 value will be 1 then if we do the calculation then it will be about minus 1511028. So, how we got it minus 30 lakhs plus this NPV value will give you this cumulative NPV. In the second calculation these values are same because we are assuming that this is not varying with time and B minus C is also fixed, but this n will vary n equal to 2. So, you can see the formula here this will be 2 and then if we see the resultant cumulative NPV it will be something like 132350 and this is minus ok. How we got this value? This, this value plus this value will give you this value right. Accordingly, you can do for all the years and you can see change will be your n here and this will change and if we add it then you will get a value here. So, if we notice it in the second year it was negative value for cumulative NPV and third year it is positive ok. That means, profit has been started in the third year itself right. Then you can calculate what will happen at the end of 15 years. So, we are having very, very good profit right. So, 107 lakhs 64,412 INR it is a significant amount of saving right. So, calculations you can see here how we have done the calculations and it is not so complicated ok, but we must know the procedure how this can be solved. So, now if we generalize the project has an NPV of 107 lakhs 64,409 rupees which shows the agricultural residues which is biomass utilization for electricity in district X is highly profitable right. So, here we have three different crops residues for location A and B and location C we have two crops residues which have been used for making pellets and then pellets are used to generate electricity in a biomass based power plant. And we have considered the cost of pelleting machine and its production and then cost of power generating unit and its production. So, everything is categorically solved and at the end we try to see how much benefit we will get if we do this analysis. So, it has been demonstrated that at the end of 15 years really we will get a very good benefit out of this projects. Of course, there are ample opportunities to extend this discussion and calculations by considering variety of biomasses which are available in different places 
and that is something like waste to energy conversion techniques. It is something like economically we are harvesting energy at the same time we are managing the waste. So, it is a very good and feasible projects for power generation and waste utilization. Now, let us move to the second part of the presentation which is on life cycle analysis. In most of the projects now it is life cycle analysis is essential. Okay? This life cycle analysis is a sustainability measurement method focused on assessing the environmental effects on any product or process throughout its lifetime. Say for example, what problem we have discussed today about cultivation and then we have bracketing machine, then we have power generation unit. So, while doing the cultivations we have used some machineries and then for manufacturing that machineries also we have emitted lot of carbon dioxide. So, that is one aspect and second aspect is like while transporting we have used some convenience like transportation systems that also emits lot of carbon dioxide on related gases and then we must think about the pelletization machine while manufacturing it also produces some amount of no unwanted gases which also contributes to the earth atmosphere for heating or rising the global temperature and then power generation unit as well. So, when we are considering from cultivation to the power generation the amount of carbon which is generated need to be considered. So, that kind of analysis is nothing but LCA or life cycle analysis. The LCA approach is systematic and inclusive. It was normalized by the ISO 14040 to 14044 in 2006. LCA can be defined as the compilation and evaluation of the inputs, outputs and potential environmental impact of a product system throughout the life cycle. And it has got four basic steps like goal and scope, life cycle inventory, impact assessment and interpretation. So, these are the steps. Goal and scope defines the system boundaries. For example, our analysis might be from gate to gate or maybe cradle to the gate or maybe cradle to the grave. Okay? Or sometimes you can say well to the wheel. Okay? Then we have to go for inventory analysis mostly based on the mass and energy balance to quantify the input and output streams. Then we have to go for impact assessment. It is nothing but consolidation and identification or identifying the environmental burdens of the input and output streams attained from the inventory balance. Some of the examples of impact categories are ozone depletion, then climate change, eutrophications, resource depletion and so many things. Then we have to go to interpretation. In the interpretation step, the results from the impact assessment are used to draw the conclusions. Like sometimes multi-objective optimization studies are done to choose which among 
two options is better in terms of environmental impact. Okay. So, these are the strategies by which we can do life cycle analysis. If we talk about benefits of LCA, it helps to parallelly compare two or more systems. For example, if we are comparing energy production using solar energy versus energy production using fossil fuel. LCA can be used across various industries, domains and processes. And this LCA can be very easily integrated with other sustainability methods like exergy, life cycle cost and similar that kind of analysis. LCA study can be used as a decision making tool for practitioners and policy makers. So, this is very very essential when we are working on any projects. Now, let us take an example of generation of electricity from agricultural residues. So, our input is gasifier, then electricity, water, fertilizer, fuel use, then gasification agent. So, how this has come, I will explain one by one. Sugarcane production, when we are doing sugarcane production, then we need to prepare the soil. So, it might so happen that tractors might be required to condition the soils. So, tractors consumes fuels and at the same time while manufacturing the tractors it also emits lot of carbon dioxide and then when the soil is prepared then fuel is burned that emits lot of carbon dioxide. Okay. Then once sugarcane is grown okay, maybe fertilizers are applied to grow faster. Then once it is grown or matured then it has to cut then transport the sugar cans and then we have to extract the juice. Then from juice we will make sugars. Then the residues what remains is nothing but bagas, sugar cane bagas and this bagas can be transported to the power generating unit and before feeding to the power generating unit we need to cut it to a particular dimensions then we have to feed it to the power generation unit maybe gasification unit from where we will get producer gas and that gas what we generate we need to clean it and produce clean gas and we introduce to the engine to produce electricity and outputs may be tar, biochar and cooling water. Okay. So, now we can have huge numbers of scenarios. So, what we are trying to maximize looking into the emission level. Okay. It may so happen that we are trying to maximize the biochar production. Sometimes we will not consider tar generation. Sometimes we will say tar generation need to be considered. So, there are multiple scenarios we can create out of this and there are many softwares nowadays by which we can do this LC analysis. So, once we feed this data then the software will ask you what are the important parameters you want to study. Then you can select and then out of selection you will get the amount of say carbon dioxide equivalent say for example, I am interested about global warming then I will click that global warming and then we will get the kg of carbon dioxide equivalent. Then human toxicity if I am interested then it will give the human toxicity for a particular plant. So, that is how we can estimate the amount of carbon dioxide emitted by a plant and other aspects as per the requirements of the users. Okay. So, this is how we can do the analysis and this 
term called impact categories are to be selected to get the appropriate values of emission characteristics fine. So, this is all about the LC analysis just to have introduced the concept and we got an idea how this can be investigated and there are references which were used while preparing the presentation. So, I would like to summarize what we have discussed today primarily we have discussed a case studies considering three locations of a district and then three biomass residues or you can say crop residues and how much electricity can be generated at the end by using the biomass. In between we have also studied the pellet making, how much pellets you can make, what could be the cost and finally, we have done a cost estimation. Okay. So, this case study is really helpful to get insight of the economic analysis of a system and also we have introduced the concept of life cycle analysis by considering an example. Of course, we have discussed the benefit of doing LC analysis in a project. I hope you got a brief summary of energy economics and LCA in this presentation. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.